stay, and I'm glad you're here. Uh, it's been a tough week. It's been a tough week on a lot of folks, but uh, hey, we're here tonight. You know, I was thinking about, uh, I was thinking today that uh, about homecoming. You know, we hadn't talked anything about homecoming, and it's Sunday. I mean, we hadn't even hardly mentioned it. And, uh, you know, if you think about it, uh, when, when uh, and, and this isn't, this isn't a, a this isn't a, uh, this isn't bragging. I'm just saying, let me just tell you how busy we've been. Amen? Amen. I mean, here we are when some, you know, I know some churches are just really getting back into the flow of things, and, I'm, and, it's, and that's good. And, uh, and, but you know, this, this summer, uh, come, come July, it was on like Donkey Kong. Amen. I don't know who scheduled all that stuff, but, uh, but anyway, we, we had, uh, if you think about it, uh, we had uh, fourth of Ju we had church camp church. Amen. amen. I want to, I want to kind of do some bless. I, I want to do some praise in here. Amen. amen. We had church camp, and uh, what a great church camp. A wonderful church camp. I, it was just wonderful. And uh, I asked a young man that got saved, I said, have you, ha, I said, ha, as you've been coming to church, have you been under conviction? He goes, no, nah, but I got under conviction under Brent Willie. <laughs> so Brent Willie was pre uh, uh, preaching church camp. That ought to bless your heart. Amen. And uh, he was all tore up because he just, he, just, he just wanted to do a good job, and he was tore up about it. And uh, he, you just don't know it, but we prayed through there. We, we, he prayed through it. We all prayed for him. And uh, 10 people got saved. Amen. Amen. That, that was a good week. And what, probably one of the best church camps we've ever had. I'm talking about a great spirit, just a good, it, it was good. Amen. And then we came back, and we, had, we were going to do a church fellowship. Boy, do, are we not rebels around here. And uh, we were going to do a church fellowship on the night that they gave, uh, that they talked about the church camp. We were going to have a fireworks show like we did last year. Boy, did we ever have a fire. Was that just not a nice night? And uh, probably some, uh, this place was full. And, and there was like zero hamburgers left. And uh, it was a good night, amen? And, uh, but anyway, that, that was wonderful. And uh, then, then when we come down, uh, come down to uh, after that, uh, BBS came, and what a great BBS we had, amen, and I mean, they, Kevin and Kaylin done a great job with that, and what we couldn't do last year, we just picked it up and did it this year, it was great, and then I didn't tell anybody, but I had scheduled, I had scheduled Ken Freeman for a revival, I didn't want to tell nobody yet. Because we were so busy, amen? So after VBS, I told everybody, we're having a revival, and I scheduled it during the first week of the school. I mean, how? But I did that because he was already up at a bill, and he wanted to come. He wants to come here. So I told him, we'll go ahead and schedule it, because I think we're okay on that. I don't think, that, I don't think they'll be back in school yet. And uh, I was wrong. 35 people saved. Church, 45 people's got saved during the pandemic. Amen? And we need, amen? That's a good day, eh? Amen. So I want you to know that prayer works, amen? But why pray when you can worry? That's what I'm preaching on tonight, amen? That's what the text is all about. Homecoming Sunday. Let's just pray we have a good homecoming. It's another big fellowship. There'll probably be about 12 or so people singing. And uh, we're going to praise the Lord. Amen. And we're going to eat. Probably, I don't know what we're going to eat. I know we'll have fried chicken because I'm here. <laughs> what are we having? Does anybody know? Okay, is this barbecue bologna? It's a good day. I think God's in that baloney. <laughs> I've gotten way off track, haven't I? But don't you want to rejoice something tonight? Amen. Out of all the bad things that goes along 
of all this. Every, I mean, I turned on the news. I turned on Channel 6 tonight. I thought I better watch the weather, and I had to watch 15 minutes of COVID before the weather. And I got up front, and, and I, then I, something happened. I missed the weather. It's hot. But I won't praise him tonight. I said all that, and I wanted to laugh a little bit. We need to laugh. We went out there. Somebody, people come by and want to thank you for scheduling this prayer service. I said, I ain't done nothing. Somebody else has done it. I couldn't tell you who scheduled this prayer service. But all I know is a bunch of people there. And we was out there on the parking lot of Jackson Purchase. We prayed for Marilyn Foy. And uh, we prayed for Brother, Brother Clark out at, out at uh, double, du double pneumonia COVID. And uh, found out today that they got him up in a chair this morning Amen. after that prayer service. Amen. Found out, found out that uh, Marilyn has had a good day. And uh, she's starting to complain a little bit. So she's getting better. Amen. <clears throat> but we need to praise him, church. Amen. He has answered prayers. I mean, you look around this room and he's answered prayers. And that's what I'm preaching on tonight. Amen. And, uh, you know, one of the best remedies for a troubled heart is prayer. Amen? It's, here, here's a poem I found. I'm not much of a poem reader, but here it is. I've only got four points tonight. Amen? Oh, what a peace we often forfeit. Oh, what a needless pain we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. That's a good poem, isn't it? You know, Adrian Rogers said prayer is... Uh, prayer is the Christian's greatest privilege, and prayer is the Christian's greatest failure. Well, you know, like I said earlier, why pray when you can worry? And, uh, you know, it seems like we replace, we replace prayer with worry a lot of times, and worry is a fruit of pride. Uh, what you're trying to do is change the future, and how many of us try to do that? Uh, we can't change the future of what's going to happen uh, or what has happened in the past by, by worry. Amen. And I want you to turn with me tonight in John chapter 14 as we continue our study through the book of John. And uh, we're going to pick up at verse 10. And it says this, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, and the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. Verse 11, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say unto you, he that believeth on, on the works that I do shall he also do. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me, keep my commandments. I want you to pray with me tonight. Lord, we love you, we praise you, and we come to you tonight. And Lord, we're, we're going to rejoice tonight because, Lord, we have, we, have, uh, we, we have a lot to rejoice over. Lord, there is so many that you've raised up from sickness. And Lord, I want to lift up uh, Amber Gamble that's over at Baptist DR tonight. I pray, Lord, that you'll touch her body and, Lord, that you'll be with her and Danette in a, in a in a special way. Be with all the people in Waverly, the Waverly, Tennessee area. Lord, that's lost so much through the, through the flood. And Lord, I just lift them up to you tonight. Be with all those in Afghanistan, Lord. I pray that you'll touch those. And Lord, in, in your sovereignty and in your control, Lord, would you get all of our people out. Uh, Lord, out of there. And Lord, safely. And Lord, I just lift that up into your hands. I ask you to do that. And tonight, I want you to just sit down with us. And Lord, love us, and Lord, help us to praise you tonight and love you more each and every day. And Lord, we need you, and we call upon your great name tonight. If someone don't know you as Savior tonight, I pray that you'll draw them to yourself tonight, and Lord, where they can be saved. In Jesus' name I pray, amen and amen. I know we don't, I don't normally preach long on, on Wednesday nights. I mean, I, I, hey, if, if, you, if you'll get here, we'll get you out here by 8 o'clock, Amen and get your kids in bed. But let me give you four quick things to think about. And uh, this, I, I'll probably come back and preach a little bit on this again. But uh, number one tonight, we must pray. We must pray in faith. Amen? We need to understand that tonight. And I want you to see some words tonight 
in verses 10, 11, and 12. Look what it says in verse 10. Now, I've already preached these verses, but I want to go back, and I want you to see what's important in these verses. Number one, look at the first word in verse 10. It says, believeth. Believest, amen? It means put your faith in, put your trust in, and rely on. That's what the Greek word means for believe. Put your faith in, put your trust in, and rely on. And that's the, that's the general theme. That is one of the general themes that the Apostle John uh, uh, was, spe was speaking about. As a matter of fact, if I remember right, I think some 56 times he uses that word believe. Uh, but anyway, let, let, let's look at verse 10. It says, believeth thou that I'm, not, I'm in the Father, this is Jesus talking, and the Father in me, the words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the work. Notice verse 11. Look at the first word. Believe. Everybody say believe. believe. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me or else believe me. Everybody say believe. believe. For the very work's sake. Look at verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me. Everybody say believe it. And the works that I do, he shall also do, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. Now, I know I've preached those verses, but I, I want you to see in John, chapter, in John chapter 14 here, in verse 10, he says, believe. Verse 11, it says, believe. Verse 12, he says, believe and believe. And John 14, 10, and when you look at that word believe, it's in the singular. Jesus was, was addressing Philip before him. And then when you look at verse 11, it's in the plural. And Jesus addresses all the disciples. And, 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 the, and the tense of both is, 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 means this. It means go on believing. We need to, we need to keep believing, church. Amen? Amen? Amen. And he says it means go on believing. Let your faith grow. That's exactly what that means. If you're with me tonight, say amen. amen. Now I preached on that Sunday night, so let's, let's pick up in verse 12, and, and let's go to my second point. My second point tonight is this. Jesus addresses the power he gives the apostles. Look down with me in verse 12. He says, Verily, verily, most assuredly, most assuredly, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Now he's talking about his disciples here that's going to be apostles. Amen? And greater works than these shall he do because I go to the Father. Now I want you to notice that tonight because he tells them in, 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 a, in a truthful way that the greater works than these shall, shall they do. This applies to the apostles who were given power to, to perform special miracles as, as, and it gave, them, it gave them the credentials that they, they belonged in that, in that office of the apostleship. And I want to give you a couple of places to go back and reference to that. That'd be Romans chapter 15, verses 18 through 19, and Hebrews chapter 2, verses 3 and 4. So he, he addresses the power that he's going to give his apostles. Amen? Now, we have power tonight because greater is in, in me than he that's in the world. Amen? Amen? We have the Holy Spirit of God. And Jesus told him to wait for the promise. Did he not do that? Somebody say amen to that. In Acts chapter 1, before he has sent it up. In verse 8, he tells him, he said, in verse 4, he tells him to wait for the promise in Acts chapter 1. And he, and then he said, because you're going to receive power. And in verse 8, he tells him that power is going to come from the Holy Spirit. And he, they're going to be witnesses to him in Samaria and, and Jerusalem and all through the outer parts of the world. Amen? Y'all with me? Say amen. So we have the Holy Spirit today when we're saved, and we have power to do things that we don't really understand that we have. Amen? Now, I'm not going to go around and zap nobody or nothing like that. I don't have that kind of power. Anybody? Amen? amen. I mean, if I had to get the healing, I mean, if, that, if, if the gift of healing was present today, I would have used it yesterday when I was at Jackson Purchase. Amen? amen? But I can tell you today that we have power. We have power that, that, that we don't understand. And, and that's why he tells us to go ye therefore and teach all nations. Amen? Because, because he's going to equip us to do that. And we, he does that through the word and through prayer and through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Uh, you know, if you've ever took the uh, Experiencing God Bible study, which I, I believe we ought to be looking at taking that again, 
Uh, but it tells, it tells us that God speaks through different ways. Number one, he, he speaks through the Word of God. Amen? He speaks, he speaks through the Holy Spirit of God, through the Word of God. Amen? He speaks through prayer, through the Holy Spirit. Amen? And the Holy Spirit's making intercession for us. Amen? Y'all with me? And he also, he also speaks through the church. Now, I don't get nervous about people if, if they come up to me, and it hadn't happened in a, lot, in a lot of years, but I have people, had people in the past that I've seen come up to people and said, God told me to tell you something. Run. Yeah, amen. Amen? amen? Because when God speaks through the church, a lot of times people don't really realize that God is speaking through them sometimes. And sometimes he's confirming things in, in, that maybe God has already talked to you about. Amen? I was going to, I was, me and my wife, my wife's sick tonight, and, but anyway, I, 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 we were praying about opening up our own business, and, and we were in prayer about that because, uh, you know, hey, it, it, that's kind of a hard thing to do, and we were praying about that, and we'd been praying about it for a while, and we talked to our pastor about it, and, and, then, and, then, and then in that, we, I talked to, to, to a couple of deacons over at Trace Creek that I thought a lot of, and a and, uh, and matter of fact, they, they encouraged us to do so. And then somebody else out of the blue one day, when we, me and Cindy just went down to pray, another man came up that had no idea of what we were praying about, and he prayed over us and asked God to bless our business. Hello? He had no idea. But God confirmed that through him, and he's part of the church. Amen? And, and, that, and God does that. He does those type things. But, but what, what is the key thing? Prayer. Amen? The Spirit of God takes the Word of God, talks to us, the Spirit of God through prayer. He, 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 he intercedes for us. Amen? He talks to the church family, and He also talks through circumstances. Sometimes, sometimes God changes our circumstances to get us where we need to be. That's when we get upset sometimes because nobody likes for our cheese to be moved. Amen? I mean, we don't like to be out of our comfort zone, but sometimes God has to change our comfort zone, get us out of our comfort zone by changing our circumstances in which we are. You know, there's people in business here that God changed their circumstances at where they work. Now they're in their own business, and, and God has blessed them for that. But what happened? Their circumstances changed. And God will use that sometimes. If y'all are with me, say amen. Anybody want to take a black and be Bible study on experiencing God? We need to take that again, don't we? And we because we need to learn more and more how God speaks to us because God is speaking and God is working every day of our life. He's always working. He's always working around us. And, he's, and, and, and where he works, where we see him work, that's where we go join him in his work. Now, I'm getting somewhere here because God wants us to join him in his work. Amen. Amen? What we try to do, we try to have a burning bush experience. Amen? I mean, you do. You want to walk along. Oh, a bush is burning. And you're expecting a voice from heaven. Moses, Moses, take off your shoes. You're on holy ground. That's what you want. It don't work that way. See, God gave us something a whole lot, a whole lot more effective in our day. He gave us the Word of God. He gave us the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit talks to us. Amen? But you got to be saved to have the Holy Spirit. Amen? Anybody home? Now, I'm getting somewhere here. Prayer is is the central part of communicating with God. Amen? amen. Through his word. Now, y'all with me? Say amen. amen. Now, now here, here's where I want to get to tonight. Number three. We must pray in Jesus' name. Now, that's very important. Amen. We were at youth camp uh, years ago. I was at Trace Creek. I, 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 I was one of the people that went to youth camp, and we had a... a, a uh, People come in and, and led worship for us. I don't, I don't remember who they were, and it was a long time ago. But I remembered every time they prayed, they would just pray, and then at the end of their prayer, they'd say, Amen. 
And I thought, man, I wish he'd pray in Jesus' name. You know, and then the next thing you know, he's praying again. He says, amen. And amen. And I went up to Brother Nathan. I said, hey, you see anything odd about them guys praying? Yeah, they don't pray in Jesus' name. <laughs> oh, Nathan, pretty sharp, i just tell you. I said, don't that, that kind of bothers me. Anyway, what, I mean, it's nothing to die on a hill about. Amen? But it's important to pray in Jesus' name. I'm going to explain to you why. Everybody with me? Say amen. amen. Now look down with me in verse 13 now because here's where I need to get to. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Let's go ahead and read verse 14. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. Now, do y'all see anything significant about praying in Jesus' name? Now, this is not a magic formula to pray by to re receive selfish prayers. Amen? Uh, th this praying is in God's will and trusting Him in His will. You need to understand that tonight. Let me say it again. This is not a magic formula to pray by to receive selfish prayers. This is praying in God's will and trusting Him in His will. One of the writers said this, The whatever, in verse 13, is qualified by all that God has revealed in His Word about prayer. Likewise, the anything, in verse 14, does not give complete freedom to act as one wishes or think or, or thanks best. We do not give our terms for an agreement with the Lord. We pray in Jesus' name, meaning praying in God's will. Right. Now, do you understand that tonight? You're not going to, Lord, help me win the Powerball. <laughs> in Jesus' name, I pray. That's not what he's talking about. Right. Amen? Right. There's nothing about the Powerball in the Word of God. Amen? Our prayer should line up with what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen? Right. I remember a woman told her pastor that God told, God told her to get a divorce from her husband. And she got to talk, you know, she was on one of those rolls talking. You know, and he said, no, whoa, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's go back. God told you to get a divorce? Now, I knew the pastor knew the whole circumstances. Amen? And he said, that don't line up with what the Word of God says. Amen? Amen. Now, now, I realize people go through a divorce. But she thought that God told her to go get a divorce. Anybody home say amen? amen. But that don't line up with the Word of God. Now, we know divorce happens, and God's not done with you when you get a divorce. Amen? Amen? What I'm trying to tell you is it's all got to line up with God's Word. Right. Amen? Amen? Because we're praying to get into His will, not to bring God into our will. Right. Y'all with me? Yeah. And that's what that means there. He said, and whatsoever you shall ask in my name, verse 13... That will I do that the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if we ask anything in my name, I will do it. Praying in God's will. If y'all are with me, say amen. amen. Turn with me to 1 John chapter 5. Anybody get anything out of this? Amen. I want you to turn to 1 John chapter 5. And let me, let, me, let me back up what I've said. And let's look at verse 14. If you don't have your Bibles, you can look up on the screen and I know a lot of you is trying to take notes, and I'm trying not to go too fast. But in 1 John chapter 5, verse 14, it says this, And this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He hears us. Y'all see, I'm, I'm backing up what I'm saying. Amen? Amen? See, God's got a will. He's got a purpose for our life. He saved us. He has called us. He, he, he's called us for His, not for our purpose, but for His purpose and for His glory. And He equips us to, He equips us 
with the, with the character that we need to fulfill the job he's going to give us. Y'all with me? So what you do, you pray to get in God's will where he can build the character in you that he's going to use for his purpose in his ministry. Amen? And he tells that in, in verse, in verse uh, 14. Anything, he, said, he said, and this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if, and, and if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have, uh, we have the petitions that we desired of him. Y'all see that tonight? I just want to back up what I'm trying to say. Church, prayer is not for getting man's will done in heaven, but, but for God's will done on earth. Y'all understand that tonight? Turn with me to Matthew chapter 6. And let's look at the model prayer called the Lord's Prayer. Amen? Now, this is a model prayer. You can pray it, but it's a model. It's, a, it's, it's, an, it's to show us how to pray. Amen? In Matthew chapter 6, look with me in verse 5, and Jesus is talking. And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. That would be vainglory. Amen? And in verse 6, but thou, when thou prayest, enter into your closet. And when thou hast shut the door, pray to the Father, which is in secret. And the Father, which seeth in secret, shall reward thee openly. Now watch. But when you pray, use not vain reputations as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard for their long speaking. <coughs> Excuse me. Be not you therefore like unto them, for your Father knoweth what things you have need of, before you ask. Okay, now, now that's significant. Can I read again? Be, be not you therefore likened to them, for your Father knows what things you have need of before you ask. And if He knows you have need of those, then He's going to show you what they are. Amen? You'd be praying in God's will. Now watch. After this manner, therefore, pray you, here it is, O Father, which are in heaven, hallowed be thy name. That's a good way to start out. Amen? Now, now here, here's where I want to get to. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, we pray to move into God's will. His will be done on earth. Amen? Give us this our daily our, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and amen so you see here tonight you can see right here church that prayer is not getting man's will done in heaven but God's will done on earth amen this is a model prayer, an example of how we should pray. We need, to, we, need, we need to take to heart that God's will is for the benefit of our protection. You know, there's a wonderful freedom in living in God's grace and God's freedom. There's, it's just a wonderful, it's a freedom living in God's purpose. And God wants us to seek that out. Amen? I want you to turn with me to Matthew chapter 7. We're just turning the page. Look down with me in verse 7. <clears throat> Matthew 7, 7. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth, and to him that knocketh it shall be opened. And, and when you look at verse 7, he, it says, ask, seek, knock. It means, it means keep on asking, keep on seeking, and keep on knocking. What are you seeking? God's will. Amen? Amen. 
In church, there's nothing wrong with seeking God's will. That's what He wants you to do. He wants you to pray to know His will. Amen? If y'all are with me tonight, say amen. amen. Well, let me give you the fourth and final thing. Number four, we must love Jesus. Amen? That helps the whole thing, don't it? And it's right here in verse 15. It says this. Let me, in our text, let me turn back there right quick. Matthew 14, 15, he says this. If you love me, keep my commandments. You know, praying and, praying and loving obedience is a good thing. Amen? God wants us to love him. Why? Because he first loved us. Amen? As a matter of fact, I think it's in verse 21. He says this in, verse four, in chapter 14. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loves me. And he that loves me shall be loved of my Father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself unto him. Y'all see that? Say amen. amen. Look at verse 23. Jesus answered and said unto him, If a man love me, he will keep my words. And my Father will love him, and we will come unto him and make our abode with him. He that loveth me not keepeth not my sayings, and the word which he hear is not mine, but the Father's which hath sent me. So it's important to see that we love God. We, we need to love Jesus. Amen? Turn with me to Philippians chapter 4. We're going to kind of finish this up. Y'all get anything out of this? One of my favorite passages of scriptures is, is, is Philippians chapter 4. And, and I, I love, I've loved verses 4 through 7. It says this in Philippians 4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. We need to rejoice tonight, church. We've got a lot of answered prayers, and I, I tell you, you know, we always, we always give testimonies before we leave. A lot of people give. We need to rejoice. It says, Let your moderation or let your gentleness be known unto all men. Verse 5, The Lord is at hand. The Lord is near. He's near. Even when you think he's a thousand miles off, let me tell you, he's near. Be careful, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing, be anxious for nothing. Praying in God's will will help you with that. Amen? Loving God will help you with that. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and and supplication, that's a deep, earnest prayer with thanksgiving. We need to be thankful tonight, church. Right. We need to pray in thanksgiving. Let your request be known to God. I love verse 7, and the peace of God. There's one thing we need in our hearts, that's peace, amen? Yeah. And the peace of God, which pass all understanding, shall keep or guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ. Yeah. Church, praying in Jesus' name. Praying God's will. Praying and loving God in obedience. There's peace and victory in that. Amen? Amen. Let me give you one more tonight. Turn with me to Matthew chapter 11. And let's finish. Everybody say believe. Everybody say pray. pray. Everybody say pray in God's will. In God's will. Everybody say love Jesus. love Jesus. In Matthew 11, one of my favorite passages of Scripture, verse 28, Jesus, he always gives an invitation, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy burdened, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. That's a good verse. Amen. When I was at Trace Creek, I went through, I've told you all this, I hadn't told you in a long time, but 
in, in the year 2000, 2001, somewhere in there between there and 2006, about a six-year period, I went through a, a long period of, of doubting I was saved. But the funny thing was, I still taught the Word of God, and I was excited about it, and I still preached the Word of God. But I'd get, I'd get, I'd get to doubting. Anybody home? But I knew, I, I knew there was, God was dealing with me and talking to me through that, but I, but I still had that passion to preach that Word. Amen? And I weren't, never was afraid to die. I knew where I was going, but doubt's a funny thing, isn't it? And God uses that sometimes to talk to us. And, and I'd, I would get up at 2 or 3 o'clock in the morning, and I would just be grievous about it. And I'd open up the Word of God, and I'd start praying, and I'd start marking things. And, I, and, and, and I, every night, it, it seemed like two or three nights a week, I'd be up 2, 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. I mean, it's kind of tough to get up and go to work. Amen? Finally, I, I wrote down, I tell you, listen, Lord, I, I, I read this verse right here. I read verse 29. It says, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I'm meek and lowly in heart, and you shall find rest unto your souls. And I said, Lord, that's what I need right there. I need that rest unto your souls thing. And I said, I'm going to write down everything that's bothering me, and I'm gonna, I, and, and I want you to take care of it. And I started writing. I started writing all the things that I was, that was bothering me. And that, there was some 14 things that I wrote down. And I folded it up and I put it in my Bible. I said, Lord, I can't handle these things, and I, I, I you got to handle it. And I went to bed. About two weeks later, I was in church, and I. Opened up my Bible at some point, and, and, that, and I saw that list, and I pulled it out, and I read it, and he answered the first four things, and it scared me, and I shut it back up, and I put it in my Bible. <laughs> I said, thank you, Lord. I appreciate it. You know, God will do that. And he'll give you rest until you souls. And he wants you to have rest into your souls, but he wants you praying into his will. He's got a will for our life. We're, we're, sometimes I get a little selfish in when, when I'm praying and I'm asking for other things. and You know, y'all know. But you know, I try to stay on the mark and pray for people and pray for God's will. I just, it's just, you know, I, I, that's, that's what a pastor, a pastor is supposed to preach, be in the Word, and pray for his people. He's supposed to be doing that. And I do that. I try my best to do that. And I pray for all of y'all. may not be in one day, but I pray for you. Amen? I got this little thing or app on the phone. It's a good prayer tool. Amen? Oh, they got their picture in there. I can pray for them. And that's how I learned your kids' names and everything else. I pray. Amen? The church, God will take care of that stress for you. Amen? He'll take care of that stress for you, but here, here's what he's wanting to do. He's maneuvering, he's maneuvering you into his will. He used that six-year period of me doubting to bring me into a point where he had me ready for the next ministry he was going to give me but through that he matured me through the word and through prayer it was a hard time six years of hard i didn't get a lot of sleep good thing i was young but church that's that's god talking to us you know and he's he's talking to us and that's a good day that we're a son and we're not we're not illegitimate amen but God's maneuvering us. And if God's dealing with you, it's because he loves you. you got to remember, everything God does, he does it out of a heart of love. Because he loves his children. Amen? Amen? I mean, we think he's up there with the big club waiting for us to mess up where he can pounce on us. But that's not, that's not, that's not the way God operates. 
It says in that verse, in that verse I read you, he says, learn of me. When you learn God's character, you'll know that he's a loving father. He's a loving savior. And he corrects his children. But he does it in love and restoration. Not in pouncing and condemning. Y'all with me? That's Satan that does that. Well, I want you to know God wants us to love him. He wants us to pray in his will. He wants to pray in his name. Amen? Amen? And he wants us to love him. Let's pray. Lord, we come to you thanking you, Lord.